Tonight on TBN, it's football season and Lucas Freeman is here to teach you how to toss a football. Azaria Charles recaps the highlights from the 7th annual Saturday Summit held at Masters and co-hosted with Rye Country Day School. Next, Alaa Yusupova demonstrates how to tie a bow Tiffany style just in time for the holidays. And finally, if you've ever wondered about fostering animals, Masters alumna Dana Gowen will share her experience of fostering 100 kittens and counting. All this and more next. Good evening and welcome to the Tower Broadcast Newsroom. I'm Zara Suvanto. And I'm Zara Charles. We are recapping and following the latest news. It's week 14 of the 18-week NFL season, so if you haven't perfected your throwing arm, it's not too late. Sophomore Lucas Friedman is here to help. There's still time to practice your toss before you need to impress your family during the holiday football games. Hello, my name is Lucas Friedman, and today I will be teaching everyone how to throw a football. First, before we go outside, we need to learn how to grip the ball. First, start by finding the white laces on the ball. For me, they're right here. Next, you're gonna see little ridges in the white laces on the ball. You're gonna put each one of your fingers on one of the ridges and leave your pointer finger hanging out on the brown part of the ball. Next, we need to learn how to throw a football consistently. So let's go outside. Now that we're outside, we need to learn how to throw a football consistently. So let's use the grip that was shown before in the video with one finger on the brown part of the ball and the rest on the laces and throw in a tomahawk motion to get the spiral on your ball and throw accurately like that. To throw harder or softer adjust how much power you're putting into it when you're throwing with your arm like that or if you want to throw softer you can add more arc on the ball like this. And that's how you throw football consistently. That is all here from the Tower Broadcast Newsroom. Have a good day. Thanks so much, Lucas, for that amazing video. Now I know how to throw a football better. What about you, Zari? Well, I personally learned how to throw and catch a football, so you better catch me outside. Just before Thanksgiving break, Masters partnered up with Rye Country Day School to host the Saturday Summit on Social Justice, following the theme of taking affirmative action being in control of your own narrative. Nine other independent schools attended the event, such as GCDS, Holy Child, Hackley, Iona Prep, King School, and much more. The seventh annual Saturday Summit started off with a warm welcome from Celis Douglas, the Associate Head of the Center for Inclusive Excellence from the Master's School, and Ollie Morgan, Director of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion from Rye Country Day. Mr. Morgan talked about the schedule for the day and left everyone with a few words of inspiration. Good of the people, knowledge of the ignorance, hope, hope of the despair, open doors, open minds, open hearts, a reminder that we make it through dark times. The light is here. Before students headed off to their first sessions of student-led groups, head of school Laura Danforth expressed her gratitude toward the facilitators for their hard work in making the sessions possible. Once the introduction was over, students, faculty, and administrators split up into different workshops that were ran by the facilitators. Each person got to choose the workshops they wanted to attend. Students broke off into seven different affinity groups twice during the day. The groups were based on which the student felt best reflected their own identity. It was a safe space for students to talk about their experiences with other students and adults. At the end of the day, each of the affinity groups presented some of the topics they discussed to everyone. 90 students from grades 8 through 12 faculty and administrators from nine different independent schools attended Saturday Summit. After attending morning sessions, students headed to the dining hall and enjoyed food during the break before heading back to Doc Wilson Hall to hear the guest speaker, Akil Bello, who is the Senior Director of Advocacy and Advancement at Fairtest.org and an industry expert on college access. His presentation was to help students understand what the Supreme Court ruling on affirmative action means for their upcoming application process. 
To wrap up the wonderful day, there was a big party in Doc Wilson Hall with food and drinks and music being played by an amazing DJ. It was really inspiring to listen to all the sessions. I really learned a lot more about affirmative action, especially since we've been doing so many stories on it. Yeah, I feel like it sounded like a great conference and it definitely expanded my knowledge. As the holiday season approaches, the Intro to Broadcast class took the time to create public service announcements, otherwise known as PSAs and how-to video segments. Sophomore Alot Yusupova shows us how to wrap the perfect present Tiffany style. Hi, this is Alot with TVN, and I was thinking with the holidays coming up, it would be really cool to teach you guys how to tie a bow on a present, but not just any way, Tiffany style. So. First, all you need is a box, a ribbon, and some scissors. What you want to do is you want to place your ribbon down on your surface and you want to kind of find the midpoint of your ribbon. And then you're going to put your box on that midpoint and kind of slide it slightly over to the left so that you're giving a little bit more room on the right side than on the left. And then you're going to take this left part of your ribbon and overlap the box just like this and you're going to do the same with the right side of the ribbon. And you're gonna put your finger in the middle of the box to hold down both parts of the ribbon. And you're going to kind of fold the right part of the ribbon. You're gonna carefully pick up the box without lifting your finger and take the ribbon under. And you're going to take it underneath all of the other parts of the ribbon. Have this nice little kind of T-shaped ribbon alignment. You're going to turn your box towards you 90 degrees. Take this part of the ribbon. You're going to loop it just like this with your finger. You're gonna hold that loop in place and you're going to take the other part of the ribbon and loop it around that loop and pull this ribbon right through here. Kind of pull it just like this and right now it's a little uneven you're going to adjust it as much as you can to create an even bow and if you need to you can cut some of the ribbon that is a tiffany tied bow Great job a lot. I had no idea tying a Tiffany bow could be so complicated. Yes, I'd definitely be using this to wrap all my gifts for my family. Have you ever wondered about the process of fostering an animal? Well, Zara Savanto speaks with Masters alumna Dana Gowen to talk about the process and her accomplishment of fostering her 100th kitten on campus. How could you not love this adorable face? Today we will dive into a world of cuteness and compassion as we explore the journey of Dana Gowen's experience with fostering baby kittens right here on the Masters campus. Dana graduated from Masters in 2011 and has fostered her hundredth kitten. One day um, three little kittens were essentially dumped at the door um, and the next day I came in and said okay we don't have space for them I'm gonna take them home and they were like okay. Um, and that really started it, but I fostered 105 animals total. So quite a few, um, and they're, they're usually in this room, um, so they can be quarantined from the other resident pets, all of which are foster fails, <laughs> ones that I kept. <laughs> the road has not always been smooth. Some kittens arrive with pretty serious health problems. It's obviously very cute, because I mean, you know, look at them, they're adorable. <laughs> Um, but it's challenging because a lot of the time they come in and they're not in great shape. Um, so these six, they came in from a pretty dismal situation and they were in horrible shape. And to be completely honest, I did not think they were all going to survive, especially this guy. Um, and you know, with TLC and one-on-one -on -one care and of course medicine, um, they really make a comeback. And so that aspect is super rewarding, um, seeing that they can bounce back with a lot of care. So I take kittens that are usually about five weeks and older. Um, and so that means they're eating, I can leave them while I'm at work. Um, but I'm very lucky that I work with animals. And so my coworkers are very understanding when I say, hey, gotta go, I have a vet appointment. I need to figure out what's going on with one of these kittens. They're usually very flexible. 
Fostering animals can be challenging, so we asked Dana about her daily routine and how she makes sure the kittens receive proper care. Yeah, so wake up in the morning, I um, make up all their food dishes, um, I prep any meds that they have to get if they're on medication, um, and then I come in here and, you know, plop all the food down, they start eating right away, um, and then I'm cleaning. So I do have to, you know, budget a little extra time in the morning, but scooping litter boxes, tidying up whatever's been made a mess overnight, um, all that good stuff. And most of it's really fun, um, but I'm trying to make sure that they're really well-rounded so that they're um, adaptable in all kinds of different situations. So I mostly foster with um, Paws Cross Animal Rescue, which is in Elmsford, so it's Westchester-based. Um, it's one of the few shelters or rescues in the area that has a brick and mortar facility so once these guys are all ready to go once they've been neutered and um, they actually just got their first vaccines yesterday um, they eventually will go to the rescue and they're ready to go so whenever an approved adopter comes in falls in love they can take them home dana explains how master students can get involved with fostering animals and how it's not just about the adorable moments and fluffy cuddles you know every rescue always needs more fosters. Um, they're kind of begging for more fosters. So yeah, just find, you know, a local um, animal shelter or rescue to you and reach out. How can you help? Maybe you can't foster for long term. Maybe they, someone just needs weekend coverage. And if you can't bring animals into your home, volunteering is great. Transporting to vet appointments is great. There's so many ways that people can um, contribute. Make sure to contribute to this incredible cause and help these kittens find their forever homes. That video of the kittens was so adorable. They were so cute. Oh my God, they were so cute, Zari. And it makes me want to foster animals myself too. And that's all we have time for here tonight on Tower Broadcast News. Thank you so much for tuning in. Remember to subscribe to Tower Broadcast News on YouTube and follow at Masters Tower on Instagram. I'm Zara Subanto. And I'm Zara Charles. And from all of us here on the TBN staff, have a great night.